All right, hey there, everybody. This is uh, CP Cards and Dice. Let me wait a couple minutes before I start up. Let me tidy up here. I got a lot of stuff on my table. Got a lot of cool stuff I got I picked up. All right, uh, hey there, Brandon Baker. How are you, brother? So we started this game. This is part two of our tutorial using um, Fall Classic Baseball. It's this game. I mean, I, it's really grown on me. Um, it started off where I really kind of struggled it, for some reason. I got started playing pretty easy. I mean, it's straightforward. It's not complicated to play. It's just the, the, to pick up on the nuances. It has a lot of nuances that really end up making a big difference in the results. And those were the little aspects that took me a while to, uh, to pick up. There aren't a lot of tutorials on this game, so I wasn't able to watch a lot of guys playing, you know, and a lot of guys teaching how to do it. So um, I had to kind of go about it, uh, you know, um, really old school, you know, hardcore things about the rules and so on and so forth. So this is a good game. I mean, we're playing the uh, Mets versus the Braves 1967. This is a June 24th start by Tom Terrific. And um, Ed Charles, uh, it's going to be top of the seventh, right? That's where we stopped. We're going to play the last three innings of the game, tutorial style. And uh, we're going to see Ed Charles, Jerry Bushek, and uh, Jerry Grody. The pitcher for the Braves is Bob Bruce. And uh, he's pitching. They're both pitching a hell of a game. There's no run scored in this game. And um, there's one thing that uh, KD is um, when, when there's an error, you check for the uh, strikeout defensive result. And that's something that I was checking with the home run, and that was a mistake I was uh, I was committing. So then uh, some guys reached out to me and said, hey, fool, you're not doing that right. So the KD happened is a check that you do for the pitchers in, in, in the bottom of the pitcher's card. When there's a result of uh, 51, 52, or 53, you can check the KD. So if the roll falls within that KD of the pitcher in that column, then he's going to pick up a strikeout, and there won't be a defense check. So that's something I was doing with the home run, and that was wrong. It shouldn't be with the home run. It should be with the with the uh, defense check, right? So that's one adjustment that I need to make, and I wanted to correct that from my first video that I was doing that wrong. And but otherwise, I have not heard any major complaints from from the the guys who've been playing this game for a while. Uh, so so far, so good. That was the only thing that I heard that I was off on. Um, so let's get started. I'm using the fast action cards, which I believe is a must in this game. Now, the cards are very, very nice. And let me show you what I did here. And I think you're going to find it interesting. Now, I have these uh, protection, these protective sleeves from Stratomatic. I play Stratomatic as well. I will be playing a game this week, uh, this weekend, this week. 
And I, those, uh, the Stratomatic cards are a little bit larger than these, but they're the same width. So they fit perfectly in that one um, sleeve, except of course, there's a piece sticking out here. But if I want to, what I could do is just cut it. And then there's no reason I wouldn't cut it. I mean, I'm gonna protect the Mets. I'm gonna still play with the Mets. So I cut it right about here. So you don't have any anything extra and you have a perfect sleeve. See that for the for the Mets. So I can the team that I'm playing with all the time is the team that I'm grabbing the most, and they're going to get kind of the the grimiest, the most, most soiled. So now I'm creating, uh, and I'll be doing that as I play. And of course, you can cut them down. There's some players that I protected, like Steady Eddie Creampool, my favorite players on the Mets. There you go, and I protected him as well. And these you can get these anywhere. You can buy if you if you buy them uh, by larger quantities, you get them cheaper. All right, so let's pull a card for Charles. Uh, no, wait, Ed Charles. Let's see. Let's see where he is. Ed Charles. There he is. Jerry Bushek and then Jerry Brody. All right, here's the pitch. And uh, again, I was picking up the card yesterday. Right, I was picking up the card because I wanted to let you guys see if you can see the um the result so here on, on the fast action card we are in the top of the seven so we're going to look in the seven it's going to be a 51 so then we're going to look at the d20 on this roll and it's a one so it's a strikeout bob bruce is a b and if you look at the kd range see that that worked out perfect you look at the kd range right there one to three it's a one so that's going to be a strikeout and i'm going to fill that in with a big k so Ed Charles strikes out to start off the seventh inning. Next is Jerry Bouchek. We're going to pull a card. And again, we go seven. That's a 15 and seven. So we're going to check his card for a 15. And that is a K back-to-back -back strikeouts for Bruce. Now we got to start checking. Uh, Bruce is getting to his max. He's getting maxed out. At 27 batters faced for a starter, that's going to be right here. Once he reaches that point, um, he's going to be maxed out. And there's a few things that we could do. We could, since it's a shit out, we can keep him where he is. I'm not sure what the rules say about it. Um, or we can move him to the C, the C column, which says, okay, he's not as effective. Uh, that's the most I would do right now. I wouldn't do any more. I wouldn't really, uh, you know, you could pull him. He had uh, how many innings pitched? 39 innings pitched, seven games started. So uh, he went usually seven innings, seven. Uh, uh, seven times seven is 49, right? Um, so he, used, he probably went a little bit less than seven innings. His, his whip is pretty high. So we'll see what happens. He's got another pit, another batter right here. Jerry Grody. You can always pull him and bring in another uh, pitcher, and we can do that. That's not a problem. So we're going to pull a card for Jerry Grody. That's a 7. That's a 33. That's going to be a – oh, it's going to be an out. That's an out, and you're just going to put the big O there, and that's going to retire the side. So we'll see what we're going to do. And uh, Tom Seaver, we're going to cut the sleeve for Tom Terrific as well. There we go. These are the ones from Stratomatic. You can do that. You buy the ones from Stratomatic, and they, the card, these cards fit pretty much pretty perfectly if we, when you just cut the top off a little bit. All right. So um, here comes the here come the Atlanta Braves. All right. So it's going to be Mac Jones and Cleve Boyer and Dennis Menke against Tom Terrific. And I got these stands. As you can see, I got these the pictures on stands. You pick up these stands for a few dollars on eBay, little plastic stands that hold up. And you can just for a change of pace so they don't, don't take up. They're not laying flat. All right, so Mac Jones. Uh, Mac Jones is, of course, 0 for 2. Uh, Seavers allowed two hits in this game. And we're going to put no runs, no hits in that. No runs, no hits. And now it's Mac Jones. And Mac Jones is a 253 hitter with 17 home runs. And we're going to pull a card. It's going to be a 7 to 21 on Mac Jones' card. Most of the results, it's a strikeout. Swing and a miss at a Seaver fastball. Most of the results come off the, the batter cards, which is kind of cool because it kind of speeds up the situation a little bit. 
All right, so we're going to pull a card again. It's going to be a, a 7. It's a 43, and a 43 is going to be a blank. Seaver is an A, so we're looking at 43 on Seaver, and that's an out. Two up and two retired for Tom Terrific. And here's Dennis Menke. Menke batted 227 with seven home runs. Again, we pull a fast uh, action card. A seven is a 22, and he's that's going to be ball four. So he works a walk, and he's down at first base. So there's a two-out base runner, and here's Woody Woodward. And a 43, that's on Woodward's card. A 43 is a blank. We look on Seaver 43, and that's going to be an out to retire the side. No runs, no hits, one left. All right, so this is, a, I mean, it's a great game. Now, this is where uh, Bob Bruce is tired. He's going to be due up next inning. So what we're going to do here, just to kind of reflect that he's going to become fatigued at this after the next batter, he becomes fatigued. We're going to move him to column three, which he's a, a column C, if you will. He's a column B right now. And you're going to see that. And he's going to be less effective in column C. And that's going to show that he's fatigued. We're not going to just kind of keep him at B or move him to A. Um, I mean, you could move him to A. You could say, well, he's pitched seven innings of no-hit ball, and now he becomes an A pitcher. He get, becomes better. Right? You could do that as well. Um, I don't know if there's anything in the rules about this. So this is kind of a, a, a personal decision. There may be some something in the rules about this, but uh, you know what? Um, you could. He's not a guy. If, if he was like a Seaver or somebody who was really a, 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 a kind of kind of like a stopper, like uh, he, he was the the main the ace of the staff, I would say okay, he becomes stronger as the game. This is a guy that pitched seven games, uh, seven starts. He had one complete game. And so I would say that he becomes a C pitcher. That's a difference. So that's really a, you know, a, a call. A, a, you got to make your own decision on that, you know. Um, all right. So Seaver's up here in the top of the eighth thing. We're going to pull a card. And top of the eighth is a 32. And that off Seaver is going to be a blank. See that? It's a blank right there. And then we're going to look at Bruce. What is that on Bruce's card? A 32 if he's a C. And that's going to be an out. Actually, there's no change in that because that's his 27th batter. So it's still still an out at 32. And here's Buddy Harrelson. And what we're going to do here is we're going to cut the top of the sleeve as well to kind of protect the cards because these are the ones we're handling every day. These these cards are the ones we handle every day because they're the, we, we're replaying the Mets. All right, so now he's going to move to a C column. The pitcher is going to be a C column now because he's fatigued. He's pitched his 27 batters. So the minute he gives up a hit, at least a hit, then we'll remove him. All right, so we pull a fast action card. It's the eighth, so it's going to be a 35, a 35 under C, and that's going to be a ground ball and through for a base hit. So we have Harrelson on with a single. And Cleon Jones is going to be next. And this is where we're going to now remove uh, – I'm going to bring in a reliever. And the way I do the relievers is I just kind of look and see. This guy had Claude Raymond. 28 games in relief. And we may have to pull a double switch here as well. So the pitchers are the ones with the three columns. And that's how you know Ken, uh, Ken Johnson's a starter. He would be their, their, their ace, I believe, or one of their better pitchers, 1.0. 1 and, and Danny LaMaster, 1.1. 1 .1. Phil Necro. 20 games started, but he can also come in relief, so we can use him in relief. Here's another reliever. Dick Kelly is a lefty, so we got a righty and a lefty, and we got a Negro we could use. Not Pat Jarvis. Jarvis, again, is another starter, but not very good. Clay Carroll, I know he's a he's a reliever. Jay Ritchie, he's a big-time reliever. He's probably the guy who came in the most, who relieved the most. Uh, Cecil Upshaw, he's another one that had a lot of relief appearances. Rack, Rackow had a bunch of relief appearances. And uh, Ramon Hernandez had a ton of relief appearances. So let's see who's coming up. Cleon Jones is a righty. Stahl is uh, a lefty. And then there's two righties coming up. So we'll bring in a righty with a runner on first base. It's going to be Cecil Upshaw. Uh, hmm. no, where, where was this other guy with the 58 appearances? He had a lot of appearances. 
52 appearances. Jay Ritchie's going to come in. So bring in Jay Ritchie. All right. And uh, so let's do this here. We're going to bring in Jay Ritchie now. we got to know what column Ritchie's going to pitch from. So we're going to we're going to roll a die here at uh, D20, and we're going to see what it reads. This is important for the game. This is huge for the game. That's why it's exciting to see what's going to happen. So that's that's a D6. Let me see if I can find a uh, a D20 somewhere. So far, I don't see any D20s anywhere. Anywhere to be found, I have a D20. Sometimes they go flying around me. All right, and this I believe is a no, ten. This is a giant D10 as well. No, D12. 